Hello, in this afternoon lecture, we'll be looking at anatomical to template alignment considerations, or more generally looking at nonlinear warping. This continues a previous presentation on alignment and registration in general. This is using the AFNI 14 handout. It's in your AFNI handouts directory, AFNI 14, if you don't have it open already. Okay, the main program in AFNI for nonlinear alignment or registration is 3D QWARP, and it's quite a general and flexible program. The SS Warper program is a, a wrapper for 3D QWARP, and what this does is actually uh, two jobs in one. The SS stands for skull stripping, and then the warping for alignment. And the main idea of this that we'll talk about later is that performing each of these and kind of going back and forth between trying to skull strip and then do alignment and then use that to improve skull stripping helps both of them quite a lot. So this is probably the main program for uh, human studies that we recommend using. And we'll see that its results can also be put directly into afniproc.py. Autowarp.py is also a wrapper for 3 dq warp. Um, it just wraps around some of the, the variables, uh, some of the options to use with it, but again, th this will be the main program we'll focus on for human studies. The equivalent for animal studies is called at animal warper. It also performs skull stripping and alignment simultaneously. When you're analyzing animal data sets, most, most of the aspects of your analysis are similar, but there are some important differences such as the overall uh, size and scale of the brain and data set and features. There's also possibly different contrasts and things like that. So this script uh, is, is a little bit separate, but it has fairly similar, at least uh, input output to at SS Warper. It can also be integrated with AFNI proc. In general, we're talking mostly about aligning an anatomical data set to a template, but in general, whenever you're aligning data sets of different subjects, subject A to B, then we think you should use nonlinear warping. Just because the heterogeneity of structure across any group of subjects is so high, if you really want to have a good match or as good a possible match of the structures, comparable structures, then nonlinear warping is really required. And this assumes that you're aligning something like uh, anatomicals of the subjects and not EPI volumes that don't really have enough resolution or detail to probably warrant uh, nonlinear registration. Something to note, indeed, the rumors are true, nonlinear warping is slow, but um, there are some things that help this out. One, it's not impossibly slow, and two, the program, underlying program for this 3D QWARP was written by Bob inherently paralyzed, parallelized for speed up on multi-core machines. So if you have more than one CPU or thread, then you can speed up your the 3D QWARP or any nonlinear alignment program quite a bit. There's an environment variable that you can set called omp num threads. This omp is because the the way that the parallelization was done was using something called OpenMP. So for example, if you have eight cores on your uh, machine that you're using, you could designate seven of them for nonlinear warping. This is the syntax in T-Shell for doing so, and this is the syntax in Bash. And if you wanna see what your uh, value is set to, then an easy way to do it is to run 3D QWARP minus HView, which I'll demonstrate here quickly. So here in my terminal, I'm just going to type 3D QWARP minus HView. HView opens up the help in a separate uh, text editor, but you see here there's a, a useful bit of information dumped into the terminal still. The omp thread count is three. Now in this case, I'm just on my laptop, which only has uh, four cores. So three is a, is a reasonable number anywhere up to 16 or, or higher. I've used 32 on the BioWolf at NIH. And again, that can increase the efficiency and decrease the time of processing. Okay. When you're uh, aligning to a template, there are a few considerations we'll just mention briefly here. One, you should choose a template which is most relevant to your subject group. So if you're 
performing a study on the pediatric data set, then you should use a template that's meant for children. That would improve overall your alignment of results and the, uh, the relative alignment across your study, most likely. When you're using nonlinear warping, which you should be for any time you're aligning to a template, you want to make sure also that your template has a lot of detail. Nonlinear warping uses a lot of degrees of freedom over these um, patches, subsets of your field of view. You're spending computational energy to try to match finely and uh, push and pull, you know, sulci and gyri around and things like that. If there's no detail in your template, then you're not going to get a lot of benefit for having nonlinear warping and that flexibility. There's nothing to really latch on to. So use a, a very sharp, crisp uh, data set that has good resolution. Uh, that will help you quite a lot. And also, if if you're performing skull stripping separately and then performing nonlinear warping, you really want to make sure that skull stripping is good because if you leave extra bits of skull on the, your subject anatomical, for example, the nonlinear warping program is going to take the region around there and treat it all like brain and then spend time aligning that whole thing, including the skull, to the template. So you might get some very odd results then because the the little piece of skull will be left on. This is because nonlinear warping is um, locally sensitive to structure. It's not just a global average like the linear affine. So this is one reason why now we recommend using the at SS warper, which will toggle back and forth between the skull stripping and nonlinear alignment and kind of use both. So it, it should improve skull stripping and, and not really uh, be as affected by, by quirks that might be there. And there's a whole presentation on templates and atlases in the boot camps, and so we recommend looking at that for more details about uh, choosing a template and atlas and seeing what's available. So in more detail, this at SS warper for skull stripping and nonlinear alignment does two jobs in one, removing the subject's anatomical and native space, so that helps mask the anatomical, and then uh, estimating a nonlinear warp to a standard space template and it even outputs images for you to help you check alignment. As we've mentioned many times before, when you're performing any kind of alignment, you really need to check visually the results afterward to make sure the alignment is good, checking at all the sulcal and gyral features internally, ventricle, tissue boundaries, etc. And these images that are made automatically help you be able to do that in a systematic and very efficient way. You can process 100 subjects, and just open up all these images and just flip through them very quickly. So the, the QC um, can be done really very efficiently. And by kind of quote unquote batch processing the QC in this way, you, you allow your, your eye to detect if there's any systematic difference or if one or two subjects have a difference in a region. The human eye is very sensitive to seeing deviations and patterns. So opening up, for example, um, this comparison here where the underlay is template and the overlay are the the edges of the anatomical all of a sudden you might notice kind of a, a blip out in one direction and again the human eye is very sensitive to this so this is our recommended tool to to use when you're processing data it, the outputs of it can be efficiently entered into uh, afni proc pi and how that is done is described in the help file and also some tutorials online Okay, um, how do we compare something like 3D QWARP, the AFNI workhorse program for nonlinear alignment, with uh, other alignment tools? Well, we could take a group of subjects, estimate the warp from the anatomical to the template for each, and then uh, use those transforms to warp a specific ROI from each of those subjects into the standard template space and see how the overlap goes. So here's an example from uh, this poster from OHBM comparing nonlinear alignment results for ANTS, DARTEL, uh, the FSL program, and 3D QWARP. And in this case, the yellow color means the highest alignment. So the hot colors mean a large fractional overlap of the ROIs and yellow is the maximum. And you can see here that 3D QWARP has a lot of yellow throughout, probably the most out of all of these. So all these programs, the nonlinear alignment results look 
uh, you know, reasonably consistent across all of them. It's just here, uh, it looks a little bit uh, more consistent. Okay, just a brief note on some other types of alignment that are possible in AFNI. Uh, this was mentioned in a, in a previous lecture a little bit, but here's an example of using non-MRI data and aligning across MRI to non-MRI. This will happen often in uh, surgical clinical planning situations. In this case, this is aligning a CT data with electrodes to MRI data and also including uh, diffusion data here. You'll notice the tracking. These are SUMA visualizations of the output. Uh, this particular project here was worked on by Justin Regendra, who's now a member of the AFNI group. And this is working with another group at NIH, um, Silvina Horowitz. This was work done with uh, Ziad Saad. Here's another case of bringing CT data into the MRI world. So ECOG, uh, again, looking at electrodes, visualizing in SUMA. The paper and reference is here for this project, the ALICE project. Uh, Non-human data can also be uh, brought in and aligned. Here's just an example of using uh, Align API in that with rat data, and in particular with a manganese contrast, so kind of a couple differences from standard human imaging. This is not nonlinear alignment, but it's just here as another alignment example. Here's a case of, again, non-human data being used, um, but um, again, you, you can use nonlinear alignment with this. This is a, a slightly more modern form of the project, uh, demonstrating the outputs from at animal warper. Similarly with AFNI, uh, with at SS warper, this program produces some automatic quality control images and even surfaces that you can check the quality of alignment with. Um, in this program, you can include both a uh, template and an atlas, such as the NMT and D99, uh, the NMT template and the D99 atlas. And this highlights the alignment, the skull stripping ability, and the atlas region mapping, which again kind of follows from the, the quality of these. Uh, Daniel Glenn has worked a lot on this, and he is the main contact for this. Uh, note that there's a, a demo uh, using this, uh, the at SS warper with afniproc.py to uh, analyze task fMRI data. Okay, so in general, the, the, the brief summary of this talk would be whenever you're aligning to a template or between different subjects, nonlinear warping is the way to go. And particularly for aligning to a template, this at SS warper tool is particularly the one that we would recommend. And 3D Q warp is a slightly more general case, and at animal warper for animal studies. And again, to highlight, please always check the results visually. You can use images that come out of some of these scripts like at SS warper and at animal warper. And you can also make your own uh, automatic and systematic images using at chauffeur AFNI. And in both of the cases of these superscripts, you can plug the results into afniproc.py uh, directly. And so this modularization of uh, analysis we think is, is useful and also hopefully fairly efficient.